Hi, this is Digital Byte Computing. We're going to look over how to install ESX version 6 onto your Mac using VMware Fusion. Okay, so we're opening up VMware Fusion. And what this is going to let you do is we're installing the hypervisor, which is uh, ESXi, right, by VMware. And in turn, once you have that installed, then you can go in and install VMs within ESXi and manage all of your, you know, I guess servers or clients or whatever within ESXi. So essentially installing, um, in this case, VMware Fusion will let you install virtual machines. So we're installing the ESXi as a virtual machine so that it can host more virtual machines within it. Okay. So we're going to say install from disk or image and continue. You'll see that on my desktop here, I've got an ISO. This is the version six ISO. You can download this from the VMware uh, website if you're registered. So we're going to go and select it and navigate to it. So it's on our desktop and the ISO and open and continue. Now this is where we've got to determine what you're going to do here regarding your specs. Now the memory four gig probably will not be sufficient. So you can go and install it and that'll install fine. But if you want to be able to give VMs um, within ESXi, you're going to have to have more RAM. So once we change, once we um, finish this up, we're going to have to go and change this to something slightly bigger. All right, so we're going to give it more RAM. In my case, I've got uh, 20, 24 gig of RAM on my Mac. So the more RAM you have, the more VMs you can potentially have and give it more resources. Your hard drive, uh, ESX itself doesn't need very much to install, but then you have to determine where are you going to install your actual VMs themselves within ESXi. Okay, are you going to install them on the Mac hard drive? If you are, you're probably going to need more than 40 gig. If you're going to be installing them on some external media, say as a, like a NAS or a SAN, you may want to keep it the same. So for this illustration, we're just going to leave it as 40 gig and four gig of memory. Okay, leave everything else as the same. And finish, it's going to ask me where to save it. We're going to leave that as a name. We are change the name if you really want to, we're just going to leave it as is and save. So that is going to now boot the installer. You can just say enter and enter just to speed up the process. Now you will find that your mouse seems to get stuck inside this window. If you ever want to release it, you just do control command. Okay. And that will release your mouse to get back in here. You just click in that window and that will put it back in there. So while that's loading, you're going to have an option where you have to press F11 to agree to an agreement. Actually, before we do that, it's going to ask you for your administrator password for your computer. Just go ahead and put that in. Now, you're going to see that you by doing F11 by default, it's going to be using your speaker up and down, your volume up and down. Okay. So we want to do function F11 to actually hit the F11 key. Uh, and ensure that inside your system preferences under mission control, you've got show desktop, which is what I had, not set to F11. Otherwise, it's going to use the show desktop command instead of the actual F11 key. Okay, so as long as you go and do that, you should be good for the next part. All right, so we'll just wait for that to load and we'll go from there. All right, so at the installer, we're going to say enter. So this is where I said F11. Okay, you're going to get your volume. So function F11. Okay, that is now going to scan my available devices. All right, so already found local storage, which is what we assigned it, 4 gig, 40 gig before. All right, and we're just going to say enter. Select your language, which we'll leave as default. Enter. Now you want to set up a root password for your ESXi host. So this is if you need to manage your ESXi host later on, you give it a full root password. So we're going to go ahead and put that in. Make sure that password is strong because anyone who's got access to that could potentially switch off your ESX host and all of the virtual machines running within it. Okay, so it's just asking you to confirm that the disk will be repartitioned. So we're going to say function F11 again to start the install. 
So let's just let that go through and we'll check back once it's finished. So once the install finishes, just enter to reboot. Make sure it does say it was successfully installed. So that has now restarted. Now you're gonna see here, it's gonna either automatically assign you a DHCP IP address or not. Now, in my case, I've got DHCP running, so it's gonna give me an automatic IP, but you don't want to have this set on DHCP. Generally, you don't want the IP to be changing and then you lose access to your host because you can't remember what the IP is, etc. and you're gonna to have to log in and access it that way. So, the easiest thing is if you, once you're in the um, window here, you do F2, again, function F2. It's gonna ask you for your root passwords that we set before. F2 again. You can do a few things in here, okay? Configure management network. Network adapters, okay, just the one network adapter. You can do some VLANing if you need to. We're gonna do IP version four. And we're gonna go ahead and change this, okay? So currently it's set to use dynamic, which is your DHCP. We're gonna set to use a static IP. So you can actually go and put the IP address that you want in there, okay? dot whatever, let's say 101. Default mask and your subnet and your um, subnet mask and your gateway. Enter to continue. IP version six, we can disable this because we're not gonna be needing it. DNS, what is your primary DNS server? If you need access to it or not, or you can just leave it as is. Escape. Uh, it's gonna ask you if you wanna change the settings. We're gonna say yes and it's gonna reboot the host, okay? So we're gonna go ahead and do this. So the host should restart. Once it's back up, you will see that it's now 172.16.1.101 on my static IP. Make sure that your gateway is correct. So I did have to change my gateway that it was pointing to the correct location and that in my case, DNS as well was correct. Now, what you wanna do is also go into the settings area. Okay, so click on this little uh, wrench here and go into network adapters. Now by default, it's gonna be set to share with my Mac. So you're gonna share the same IP. Now we wanna set this ESX to be completely separate so we can actually connect to it on 101. So we're gonna to go to auto connect. This virtual machine appears as a additional computer on the same physical network as your Mac. That's what we want to do. And close out, so just put in your password. and that should now be detectable. So that is good to go. So you should now be able to open up. So I have, I've got a Windows open here. All right, so this is on Windows, I've got the vSphere client. So you should now be able to connect to 172.16.1.101 from your vSphere client. And you can also do it via VMware Fusion, which we'll go over. So let's just try to connect. So again, we've got root and the password that we set for the host. Make sure that you've got the vSphere version six client as well. It may ask you to install the certificate, ignore it, etc. Okay, so this is in evaluation mode. You can put in a serial key, which is for free once you've registered. And there we go. So that's now connected to 172.16.1.101. We can essentially right click on here and just create a new virtual machine and we're good to go. So you'll see that the specs Especially detecting it as an Intel Core i5, 3.2, two gigahertz, etc. Okay, two gig of RAM. So we want to change that and obviously give it more RAM. And you can also do this from, if we open up VMware Fusion, right, which we already have open, you can go File, Connect to Server. You can actually connect to it this way as well. Continue on that. And there we've connected to it there. Okay, currently there's nothing in there because we have no, not created any virtual machines. Okay, so what we can do next is we need to upgrade that RAM. Okay, so you wanna go and actually shut down 
your ESX host. And F2 to shut down. Okay, so that is now shut down. So we can now go into the settings here again, into memory and give it some more RAM. So I've got, as I said, 24 gig, so. So we can give it a fair bit more, you know, etc. So let's just leave it at 10, etc. And then it'll save that. So that is the process for installing uh, ESXi into your VMware Fusion on your Mac. So I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel, Digital Byte Computing, for a whole bunch of more videos. Thanks for watching.